And welcome back to another daily devotion. I am Pastor Roy here at Woodlawn Christian Church in Lake City, Iowa. And this devotion is for Tuesday, February 6th of 2024. We are in the Gospel of Mark. We've been working our way through Mark for a while. If you've been following along, thank you for following along. If you're new, thank you for joining us. We're glad to have you here. Uh, today we're going to be talking about yeast. Well, the yeast of the Pharisees and of Herod. Um, it's an interesting little bit of scripture here. We just got done with Jesus uh, being frustrated with the Pharisees asking for a sign. And he's like, what have I just about done doing with for you all of these things I've been doing? And we talked about that yesterday. So if you want to know more about that and perhaps why they were asking for a sign, check out yesterday's video. But today we have to deal with today's video. Uh, so we're looking at verses 14 to 21 in the eighth chapter of Mark's gospel. They've just gotten in a boat and taken off for the other side of the, of the lake again. So they're on the water. Let's jump in here. Now they had forgotten to bring bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they discussed it with one another, saying, We have no bread. And being aware of it, Jesus said to them, Why do you discuss the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Having eyes do you not see, and having ears do you not hear, and do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? They said to him, Twelve, and the seven for the four thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? And they said to him, Seven, and he said to them, Do you not yet understand? Okay, well, we could call this section Jesus flipping the script. He flipped the script. He changed the subject. He, kind of, he came in in the middle of a conversation um, and took a different direction for sure. Um, they're talking about food. They're talking about, hey, we only have one loaf of bread. Um, it's getting time where I'm a little hungry, a little peckish, as they say. We get hangry sometimes, don't we? I do. Um, my, my poor wife. Um, at any rate, I digress. They're talking about sustenance, actual physical sustenance. And Jesus is not obviously talking about that. He's talking about the false teachings and the, and the rules that the Pharisees put up and the secularism of the Herodians. So he's talking about the Pharisees and Herodians here, which are odd bedfellows. We've talked about that before um, because the Pharisees are worried about the law and the Herodians are worried about politics. They're, they're not worried about the law at all. They're worried if they, they support Herod. Um, so they're, you know, some people have called this religion and politics, this section here. And perhaps that's a good, a good example. But what he's talking about there is the leaven, the teachings, uh, the influence of the, uh, the Pharisees where they've, they've taken things too far. They built all these fences around there and the leaven of the, of the Herodians, that's their teaching where they're fo so focused on secular things. And we definitely have that. We have definitely have the, our, our church today is very much polluted by secularism. Um, and, and leaven, of course, was thought as being pollution. You know, their, their, their celebrations, Passover, and whatnot, it's unleavened bread. Even though when we do communion, we have a nice big fat loaf there, don't we, sometimes, of bread. That's not right. It should just be some flatbread, guys and gals. Um, I've said that before, but, you know, the people, the ladies that make the bread for us. Everybody's used to seeing here and where we're at. They want to see these beautiful loaves. Gail started making sourdough bread. I should have her make me some sourdough loaves up. Some, she wouldn't want to do that. They take too much work and they're too fancy. Anyway, let's get back to the topic at hand. Um, they're worried about food, for any sakes. And of course, Jesus is saying to them, guys, come on. What are you worrying about what you're going to feed yourselves? Because you've seen what I've been doing here lately. And we just talked about all of the miracles that Jesus had done yesterday. And two of which, of course, are the feeding miracles, the 4,000 and the 5,000. Now, again, here we will point out in, in, the, in the scripture here, um, remember that they're talking about the number of baskets and they're not the same kind of baskets. Um, in the first one, the feeding of the 5,000, how many baskets did they pick up? Twelve. Well, if you read that in the Greek, it's uh, and if you read that in a in a, uh, a literal translation, uh, it's translate, translated as hand baskets. They're small baskets. They're little baskets. So he's got twelve, but they're little like like smallish size picnic baskets, if you will. Uh, they're not 
the same kind of basket because the seven baskets are these huge baskets. In fact, it's the same kind of basket that they used to lower Paul. I mean, when Paul had to be rescued and, and gotten out of the city before they were going to, you know, stone him or whatever, um, he had to flee for his life. They lowered him down from the walls in a basket because it was big enough to put a man in. So these were these are uh, seven huge baskets. So obviously there's there was even more abundance there, and we talked about that back couple days ago um but the point he's getting at them is you're, you're worried about food you saw me do these feeding miracles let's focus on the mission here the mission here is is letting people know about the gospel teaching people about the gospel teaching about jesus is coming to the world he has no longer do you have to deal with these 613 laws now you're dealing with by uh, salvation by grace, because we couldn't live up to the 16, 613 laws. We can't live up to the 10. Um, I've said it before. I've made a pretty bloody mess of my life of the 10 commandments, um, for crying out loud. Couldn't even, can't, couldn't even abide by, by, by those. Most of us, can, none of us can. We all fall short, even of the 10. Forget about the 613. Our only hope, our only salvation is in the Lord, in Jesus. That guy back over there, uh, on that crucifix over there, um, that little deathbed crucifix up there. That's another story. Um, I'll tell you it someday. At any rate, he's the guy. He's the only reason any of us uh, have any hope for the future. Our only hope for the future, our promise for the future, is him and what he did on that cross. All right, let's leave it there. Um, they, they do you not yet understand. Let's let that flow into uh, the next couple of days. We'll talk about that between uh, on Wednesday and Thursday. Take care. God bless. Be a blessing to someone today. If you enjoy these devotions, please come back. Please like and subscribe. Leave a nice comment. We'd love to, uh, to hear from you. Uh, we'd love to see you here regularly. And if you'd like to share these videos, please do. Take care. God bless. As I said, be a blessing to someone today. God loves you. Bye-bye.